Fast forward to the story. It's all very organic. Yeah. We don't plan this stuff. Yo, we're Dirty Radio and we're a big deal. What do you say? Dirty Radio started because I left Edmonton and uh, I was like, I'm gonna find a singer. I need to work with somebody musically. And a week after I arrived here, I met Farshad at this really lame party. But the cool thing about it, no, <laughs> that makes me seem so lame. No, 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 no. I'm a hustle, baby. I just want you to know. And I ended up coming to my place and we just started working on music. Anthony, I knew through a mutual friend, and uh, we've just been writing songs ever since. And that was probably what, what four years ago. And then, how about the name Dirty Radio? Where did that come from? Because we were a production team first. Uh, Production-wise, you know, we really wanted to make commercial music that people could get into, but at the same time wasn't so bubblegummy, and we could kind of push the boundaries a little bit. And I think that's where the name came from. Dirty, just make it dirty. Just make it dirty. 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 Yeah, quick and dirty. If I could ask you guys to describe your sound in three words, so one word each to describe your sound. You can't use dirty in it. The radio. Big. Uh, variety. Fucking awesome. For all three of you, who are your, as a group and individually, who are your biggest musical influences? Um, I grew up listening to like a bunch of different things, like obviously you know Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Prince, and all that stuff. But then I like Metallica and I like Celine Dion and I like freaking you know Tupac and Beastie Boys. Like I liked all sorts of genres. So I grew up playing drums and playing a lot of rock and stuff. I listened to a lot of pop growing up and R and B, so I was like a huge Usher fan. And I mean recently Frank Ocean's come out with a lot of really cool stuff. So I like him and then a lot of kind of big Brit arena rock. I like Coldplay and Keen and yeah, we're, we're kind of a little place. Um, I, I started with a lot of like He's a rock. punk guy. Yeah, a lot of punk and rock and metal. Um, I was probably into like, um, I was probably into a lot of like, um, Megadeth, Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, all that kind of stuff when I was a kid. Um, but then as I got older, I really got into hip hop and electronica and like Basement Jacks and Underworld and like Chemical Brothers and that kind of thing. And then, yeah, we're just, I, I think, I think if you want to be a great musician and you want to be a great songwriter, you got to listen to everything anyway, because ultimately, regardless of the style, it's like the song itself, you know? I could ask you guys what your personal favorite track each and why. Mine's uh, Lost at Sea. I just think it's like the all-encompassing track on the record where you have the live elements, you know, the live guitars, the live bass combined with, um, <laughs> hello, with all the um, really cool kind of synth elements. So it's, it's like a perfect fusion of what we were trying to create for the record, which is just trying to genre bend as much as we could. So, and it's also, I don't know, it has a lot of real kind of emotion attached to it, which, um, you know, we can all identify with. I like obviously Lost at Sea, him and I like it, and Forever Alone, like Lost at Sea and Forever Alone were, you know, personal, I was, I was going through a lot of stuff at the time, and they kind of just happened, they kind of poured out, and it wasn't like we sat around like, let's write a song, it just kind of happened. A friend of ours, Ryan Dahl, who was also in Greenhouse, came in the studio. Big ups, Ryan Dahl. Big up, he used to be in a band called Limb Lifter, oh, actually he is in Limb Lifter. And Age of Electric. And Age of Electric. He, he came in the studio one day, started playing chords on a guitar, and I just started freestyling and stuff. So it just kind of came out. So those mean a lot to me. Plus, they're really fun to perform. Um, my favorite track is uh, New To Me, which is one of the new tracks on cassette, because it's really sexy, and if you're hanging out with a girl, you can put it on. What's your favorite part of performing live, and what can we expect from tonight's show? Connecting with the fans, I guess. Like, every show, there's something different that makes the fans go for me anyways. You know, I'm up there singing. I always find it different, like, it's different ways where I can connect back and forth with them. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works, and when it works, it's awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, we just have fun on stage, really, you know? Lots of energy. Yeah, a lot of energy. Come out of our shells and just explode on stage as much as we can. And, you know, I try and hit my drums as hard as I can. He beats the shit out of his drums. He, he breaks a lot of stuff. What's coming up for you guys that you're really excited about? Taking off on tour soon in March. Um, yeah, uh, tour. We just got back. We just got back from tour, and then we're gonna take off on a cross country, to longer tour in March. So we're excited for that. And I'd say probably the biggest thing for us is we have a, a triple record coming out next year. So a three-part album, and the first part drops in February. So we're yeah. really excited about that. Production-wise, I think it's like the coolest shit ever. What advice do you guys have for people that are just trying to make it and do what you're doing right now? Ten thousand hours. Yeah, the 10,000 hour rule. I don't know if, if anybody what book is that again? Uh, Outliers. Malcolm Gladwell, you should check it out. It's a really good book. It basically um, 
he breaks down all of the greatest performers. Uh, Beatles. Yeah, everybody. just anybody who's accomplished anything amazing, whether it's in sports or uh, music or whatever, and basically 10,000 hours is how long it takes at you whatever know. your craft is to become, a, you know, the just best. Gotta work really hard. Yeah. Gotta yeah. work hard, surround yourself Don't have a life, people. no girlfriends, <laughs> no family. Just lock yourself in a basement. That's about it. Okay. Like we're Dirty Radio and we're about to do the fun five. Would wear a big deal. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live and why? Maui. Because it's my favorite spot. And it's got the ocean and mountains and you can, you can go surfing. If I gave you 20 bucks to spend on anything right now, what would it be? Drumsticks. Depend I would go around the corner and get all you can eat Korean barbecue and sushi. You can't. Oh, we're gonna have to leave here with that 20 bucks? Yeah, you can. Oh, there's leave. opportunities are like opening now. <laughs> Tell us something about yourself that would surprise people. Uh, He's got a third nipple. That's not true. Wait, really, you have a third nipple? I'm really obsessed with video games. I used to have a gap in the middle of my teeth and I got it covered up. <laughs> what would surprise people, Tones? He was like a he's like a child prodigy. He was like a big ass. He, okay, he's like, yeah, he's a classically trained, and he used to enter competitions, and he was like big he traveled. Who did, did you play for? Like, like the Prince? When he was like, I don't know how old were you, dude? He played in front of like 30, 20, 30,000 people, and like it was kind of insane. I had a complete another life as a classical like crazy kid. So like he's that might it's an understatement. Yeah. What advice would you give to your fifteen year old self? Oh man, um, don't take life so seriously. Because I was really serious as a 15 year old kid. Um, uh, as a 15 year old kid, man, I don't know. Oh, at that time, I was playing a lot of drums back then, so I'd probably just keep keep doing drums. That's what I'd probably do. I'd probably go back and give myself relationship advice of some type. Yeah, totally. Just think things to avoid and you yeah. know, look out for. One guilty pleasure you're not willing to give up. He likes to smoke weed. There's times when you shouldn't be high, like during this interview. And then there's times. <laughs> Don't smoke weed though. Any child watching this, I do not recommend it. I didn't smoke weed until I was 19, okay? Uh, so when you're an adult, smoke weed. <laughs> I think TV. Even though I don't really have a lot of time, I when I get locked into a series, I'll just like, I'll become a zombie and, you know, marathon through yeah. like 10 seasons or something. And I'll be like, what am I doing? <laughs> watching TV. I play video games probably. I haven't had, I've hardly had a ton, like, I hardly had a ton of video games lately. Last time was the first night. Last time was the first night La in a while. Last time my little brothers came to visit me from Edmonton and we played Call of Duty last night. And I beat everybody. And that, that's honestly, he did beat everybody, but that's honestly the first time I've played video games in so long.